Hey everyone, Lucas from iExplore here. Tonight we're going to do something a little bit different um, than our last couple of videos. So we've been shooting these longer vlogs. This video is going to be a little bit more concise. But before that, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, if you uh, have subscribed to our Patreon or um, the YouTube subscription at various tiers, we do now offer access to a map of Tokyo photo spots that uh, I will be updating over time. Now, don't expect me to put like hundreds of spots there's uh, every month. Currently, I think we have a little bit over 250 spots. But you know, as I find cool new photo shoot spots for like street photography, architecture, long exposures, and things like that, I will be adding them to the map. So if you follow us or support us on Patreon or YouTube, then you will get access to this map. Also, we have like t-shirts and stuff, and then on Patreon we do have like a, like a month or a yearly plan where you can get like a t-shirt, a mug, and some other stuff like that. So please check that out if that interests you. And also one last thing, I am selling prints on my site, so if you want to buy a photo for me that you know, will be signed and, and additioned, please do check out the link in the description. All the links are in the description. Anyway, today what am I doing? We're in a cool neighborhood where we're going to get a nice view of Tokyo Tower. And I shot a double exposure photo of Tokyo Tower a few years ago. And this time I'm going to try it again with a Ricoh GR3, which Ricoh has been very kind enough to... Uh, send me one of these so I no longer have the two I now have a GR3 some of you have been asking why haven't you done you know gotten a GR3 yet I don't know I my GR2 worked so I just kept using it I'm not I'm not one to get new gear that often I really kind of put it off for years and years but hey they sent me one because we've been doing videos for their channel which on another note I should say if you've missed us for the last couple months we haven't been posting much we have produced in that time eight videos for Rico's channel so I'll put that link in the description too check out the official Rico GR channel so you can get some more I explore goodness on that channel, okay? But today we'll be using this uh, Ricoh GR3 um, for doing double exposures, okay? So I'm gonna talk all about all the settings and how to do that, and then we'll do it in a really cool spot with Tucker Tower, okay? Let's go. I explore. Okay, so quick thing about settings. Um, it's actually really easy to access the multi-exposure mode on the GR3. All you have to do is press this little button here on the right, unless of course you've, you've customized this to something else. And then you have some options, you know, you have like single frame shooting, continuous shooting, you know, bracketing, and then there's multi-exposure. And when you're in that, if you hit function over here, then you get some choices. You have average, additive, and bright. Um, I find the additive looks the most natural. It looks the most like what you would expect from a real multi-exposure to look like on film and also it mimics most what you would do if you were going to composite them in uh, in Photoshop yourself so for example you could take two separate photos and blend them in Photoshop and then you would use what's called a lighten blending and I think that actually would be most similar to at least in my experience what additive is here so I'm just going to do this on additive and then um, just do this technique so that's it that settings are very easy of course I am going to have to also choose my you know aperture shutter and all that, but we'll do that when we get to the actual spot where we're going to shoot, okay? So let's go. Okay, so here we are with a really awesome view of Turkey Tower behind me. So I'm going to put on the, as I already explained, the uh, double exposure mode, right? Multi-exposure. You, you can actually do more than two but I'm gonna do two for today. And I'm gonna put uh, the exposure settings fully on manual, okay? Because, you know, um, in this case, I don't want things changing between shots. And also it's a pretty, it's a pretty high contrast scene. You know, Tokyo Tower is really bright. The background's really dark. And I wanna make sure that the tower is actually well exposed. And if the background's a little bit dark, the surroundings, that's okay. I've chosen the settings of a 15th, F4, and 1600 ISO. 15th is quite slow, but I think I can handhold it with the uh, you know, stabilizer, the in-body stabilization in this camera. F4 because I want a lot of sharpness, although 2.8 might be enough, but just in case. And then 1600 to get the exposure. And what I'm going to do is focus on it once, so that the base of the tower is right in the center of the frame there. And then you're going to say, next shot. And then you see it overlays it. That's something that when I took this before on my SLR, I didn't have the overlay. I had to just kind of guess a little bit of trial and error. And then I'm gonna position the camera in the same, you know, composition, exactly the same, except this time it's upside down. And then I'm gonna say complete, or I could do next shot. You can do more than two if you want. For now, I'm gonna complete it. And there we go. That's the shot right there. And I gotta say that looks pretty good. That's exactly what I wanted. Nice. 
Now, something I, I should have done that I kind of forgot, but I would recommend for a shot like this, is I'm doing this on autofocus, but that's totally unnecessary. I think it makes much more sense to just put this on um, infinity. So I'm just gonna use snap focus here. And by doing snap focus, well, you know, you're gonna have a much more uh, easier time focusing on these things. It's not, you don't have to focus it with, you know, between every shot because it's already perfectly in focus. So I'm just gonna do it one more time here. Next shot, again, upside down. And I'm doing these, you know, these upside down way, the way I've kind of done before, because I think it's cool, but you can do this any way you want. You gotta experiment with it and figure out how the cityscapes look good in your case. Okay, so we were basically done, and as Axel, you know, was getting some B-roll just to get some nice shots of the tower on video, I was messing around with this little surface here. Now, one thing that I like about the Ricos is the, cam the, the camera, uh, the lens is so small that you can do reflection shots off, like, off of anything. And this surface here is like painted, but it actually catches the light of the tower really well. So I did the same thing. I did the double exposure, you know, concept like this, and then I flipped it around and did it this way, and I got a really awesome result where the tower looks like it's kind of glowing. So there you go, combining reflections with double exposures, you can really get creative and get some cool shots. All right guys, so that's about it. You know, it's a pretty straightforward uh, technique once you know what to do. It's not so much about you know teaching you the dark secrets of the Ricoh GR or other cameras, it's more about giving you the creativity, the ideas for, you know, for a technique that you can then take away and use in your own photos, whether that might be a cityscape like this or something else entirely. Now, you might, I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking like, why am I messing around with double exposure in the camera? I could just take these separately. You know, I could even take one photo, open it up in Photoshop, duplicate the layer, flip it around, you know, 180 degrees, and then do the same thing. You totally can. You can, these days with digital photography, just do all this stuff in post. But there was a time before digital where you had film, and that's how people did it on film. And I think it's still kind of satisfying to do it the old fashioned way, even though the camera gives you the overlay and it kind of helps you out so you can uh, you know, see what you're doing. But I get a little more satisfaction. When I figured it out you know, here, when I was here one, more, one day, shooting took the tower, getting the typical shot, and it just clicked to me like, hey, why don't I try the double exposure? And then you know, I experimented, I tried flipping it upside down, and it looked awesome. That was really satisfying. A little more satisfying than if I just figured it out later in Photoshop. So that's why I encourage you to play around with this technique. All right, guys, so that's it for today. Of course, please be sure to like the video, subscribe and all that. Thank you to everyone who's supporting us on Patreon and also those of you who have subscribed to our YouTube channel. And I'll catch you guys next time. And always, challenge your eye.